Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are interested in knowing whether or not you can just like stay here, not gain any weight further past what you already have and still get your period back, this is the episode for you. And if you are curious at all about progesterone levels, what it means in your lab test, and whether or not forcing a, a bleed through taking progesterone is something you should do and is important, ah, this is the end, the episode for you. So let's dive straight in to question number one from Inez. Hi, Danny. I've been following you in your podcast for a very long time, and it's really nice that you offer this resource for anyone dealing with HA. Thank you. Thank you. So a little background before my question, I've lost and gained 10 plus kilos many times, and I used to go from one extreme to the other, never underweight by traditional standards though. It's the third time I'm dealing with HA for two plus years. The other times I eventually got my period back and gained, I gained weight, but this time I don't want to go to the other extreme because I honestly was miserable at my highest weight. I've gained some weight and I've been able to maintain a weight that I am comfortable with and at which I used to get my period before for over a year, but this time I haven't gotten it back yet. For some context, I'm 161 centimeters tall and I'm 55 to 57 kilograms. Honestly, I know I fit the criteria, criteria for HA and I haven't let go of all food and exercise control, but I'm terrified of going back to my previous body. My question is, I know I should work on my mindset and love my body at every size, but is it possible to just sit at this weight and wait for my period to come back? Or do I have to gain more weight? Honestly, I know it's been a while with no results, so it means I need to change something. But I was just hoping that you could give me something to work on without more weight gain. Maybe trying soy isoflavins or some other supplement. I've listened to enough podcasts to know what you're going to tell me. And I know I'm not the unicorn and this fear is very common. Unicorn, sorry, the way I just said unicorn. The unicorn was like, I don't even know what accent that is. Maybe I just need to hear that everything will be okay. Thank you so much and a big hug from Spain. Oh, Spain. Okay. Um, I want to try and be different because you're like, you already know what I'm going to say. I have a podcast slash YouTube video that you've probably maybe seen too um, called some, something like it's not about the weight gain or so, something similar. Um, and to basically put it straight, um, you don't have to focus on like making yourself gain more weight, but you probably do need to let go of some of the control you have because those behaviors are stopping you from recovering. Um, at 161 centimeters, 55 to 57 kilos, you are still quite lean, so, you know, pretty small. So while by traditional standards, that would be considered a normal body weight for sure, I could see how um, if you sit at that weight, but then also still pull all the strings and control everything, you don't have any buffer, any wiggle room to have stress, under eating, or anything like that in, in, in your life. And the reality is we are supposed to be able to handle stress and the occasional undulation of calories, right? Under eating, where like some days you just don't eat as much as you do other days and your body should be resilient to, against this. But when you are at someone on the HA spectrum, you become very sensitive to that and you no longer have wiggle room. Case in point, you have lost and gained 10 plus kilos many, many times and had multiple bouts of HA. It often can get confusing, but what got you recovered the first time or the second time will often not work the third or fourth time. We find it's just like you're putting yourself in a different hole, a different deficit. Your body is um, adapting and learning every time that, oh, we come out of the fast and out of the deficit but we, go, we always go back in. So we're going to change how we operate. And now these are our expectations in order to thrive. In a perfect world, you would adapt the other way around, but that's just like not how it goes. So have a feeling um, the, in, the way you put yourself in and out and like recover, but then get 
afraid again over and over again is a part of the problem. Um, and at 161, okay, so say at 161 semis tall, you gain 10 kilos, putting yourself at 65 kilos. That is a normal body. So you are holding on really tightly to a small body, a lean body. You may be uncomfortable, but the facts are like, that's, that's what you think, but what you think isn't always valid. Isn't always the truth. The truth is I lost my period at 65 kilos well before 65 kilos and I'm 163 centimeters. You think that two centimeters is really that big a difference? I could never force myself to be at 55 and live. It's, you know, so with that context, also I'm 31. So we're very similar. So with that context, I just want you to know that you're being intense, you know, about this. And the issue truly lies in the root cause of your need to control. And I don't think, you know, people with issues with um, anywhere on the spectrum of an ED, right? Where we just like don't want to let go of our control of our food and our body. So disordered eating through to true eating disorder. Um, there is a there is a section of recovery where people get themselves into where they need to be dealing with their control of their body and their food but instead they distract themselves by trying to recover their period because if i recover my period i now have permission to stay in my ways if i can recover my period in this way and be the unicorn um i can not have to deal with my real issues like i am going to kick and scream and fight so that i don't have to deal with my control issues that's kind of what you're saying. So I think you need to deal with your control issues. Um, we need to like either get you up in the HA society, joining the community calls. You know, if you have a therapist and work with a therapist, like this is the type of thing you need to be working on and potentially trying to get your period back is a distraction for you because it doesn't look like that approach works because you can't sustain it. When you focus only on getting your period back, you lose it again. You can't sustain it. So don't go focus on weight gain because that'll freak you out but you need to go focus on all of your control issues and removing the habits and if weight gain happens it happens and it may need to don't know um but i think that's going to be where the issue lies for you in this okay let's go we're on a roll question number two the progesterone one so melissa emailed and she said hi danny i have a question about progesterone cream slash pills my hormone panel came back within normal ranges for all the reproductive hormones, uh, LH, FSH, etc. But my progesterone was 0.5, which I believe is pretty low. And I wondered if you'd ever recommend for someone to take progesterone, either topically or orally, in order to get a bleed. Even if it was just a withdrawal bleed. How important is it for my body to shed the uterine lining? So there's like a couple questions in here. Um... So I'm going to answer them in order. Your hormone panel came back normal, which is expected for AJ. Your progesterone was 0.5, expected for AJ. Yes, it's low, but you don't have a period. It's not going to get high. Even, even if you did have a period, uh, if you'd be taking it in your follicular phase, right? Um, this test and your progesterone would be low at the phase that you are in of your cycle right, which is a long, long, long follicular phase when you're in HA, we expect low progesterone. When we look at labs for clients, uh, whether it's an intake, just figuring out if we should work with a client or if we're tracking someone's progress, honestly, anytime we're looking at uh, labs for someone with no period, we're skipping over progesterone. We, unless it's really high or something, we're skipping over it because of course it's low. And the longer it's been lower, the lower it's going to go. So that's not really a concern. Look more at your estrogen, FSH, LH numbers. Next, would you ever recommend someone to take progesterone topically or orally to get a bleed, even if it's just a withdrawal bleed? 
So personally, no, that said, I'm not a doctor. So like there is no situation where I would be like recommending medications for someone. That's not my scope. But we do have conversations with people where we'll be like, well, maybe you should go to your doctor and ask them about this idea, you know? But it's very um, uncommon that we'll do that. With HA, <sighs> mm. Mm. Um, you don't have a uterine lining to bleed. This isn't some situation, right? So like, let's kind of get clear on what's happening physiologically. Your brain to ovary connection has ceased essentially. So there is no uterine lining being built up to shed that thing is empty. And if someone does have something and they, you know, they test it by taking progesterone to force a bleed and see what happens, like out of curiosity, it might be really light. Or if they do get a full bleed, they were already so close to natural ovulation. There's not a case where that happens. If the uterine lining built up to a thickness of which it needs to shed, the body will do so causing an anovulatory cycle. So you bled, but you did not ovulate. So the body naturally does this process. And if you don't have any other hormones being entered into your system, you know, you're not taking the pill, you're like nothing else. Um, you can trust that process to be doing thing. So no, right? Like if everything came back in the normal ranges for you, Melissa, I'm imagining that estrogen was still less than 80 maybe less than 60, roughly around there. Um, and I'm imagining that you didn't get an ultrasound, so they didn't even look at the, th the thickness of your uterine lining. Um, no, if they did, and it's really thick, that's interesting, but you're probably gonna bleed soon. This is, I hope this answers your question. I hope this makes sense because I understand it, it can be sound just like a lot of words, but really, um, you're looking at something that doesn't matter and a, the bigger picture here is your hormones are low and you need to get your estrogen up to build a uterine lining to allow for a LH surge, to allow for ovulation, to then allow progesterone to rise. No cream or pill is going to fix anything for you. Cool. Let's see, how long have I been recording for? 12 minutes. I'm gonna call it a win. I hope this was helpful, guys. If you have a question you want to submit to the pod, please do so. Or if you're listening on the pod, come over to the YouTube channel. If you're listening on the YouTube channel, go over to the podcast. There's content on both of those platforms that you are not getting if you are only checking us out in one place. And if you have a question, you can send it to me on Instagram. Send it to me in an email is the best, best way because that's the first place I go for answering questions. Um, so that's danny at the hasociety.com. You can send it on Instagram or in the comments of YouTube, which I also save on my email. So either of those works, please do so. Like and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.